Hello whiskey lovers and welcome to another one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings. Now since it's such a beautiful day we've decided not to get into the whiskey basement but enjoy this Indian summer here in my garden and today I would like to talk to you a little bit about Glenkeith. Now Glenkeith is a distillery in the space side in Scotland and it's built right next to Strathyla distillery. Now Strathyla is probably one of the most beautiful uh, distilleries in, in the world. It's definitely one of the most uh, photographed distilleries because it is so beautiful. That was built in, uh, that was acquired, I'm sorry, by Seagram's in 1950. Seven years later, right next to it, they built the Glenkeith distillery. So Glenkeith is not a very old distillery. It's only been around since 1957. Now, until 1970, Glenkeith distillery had three stills. Yes, until the day I was born, triple distillation was used at Glenkeith distillery. But then afterwards, they increased the three stills to five and uh, they started heating them by gas which was a novelty at the time. So th only three years later, they started heating the, the stills by steam. So Glenkeith is something of a modern distillery. Not only, uh, you know, the switch from, from gas to steam, but also uh, they um, were the first ones to use computers. Uh, they first started using them in the mash room, but soon after also in the, in the still room. Um, Computerization, yeah, it's, it's common nowadays, but uh, in 1970 uh, and 1973, it was still a novelty at the time. Now, until 1976, uh, Glenkeith used to malt their own barley, and for that, they used a saladin box, which is, again, something that has come out of practice. Now we all use uh, the uh, industrial maltsters, but then they used the saladin box, which is a very special um, equipment that is only used in a few distilleries nowadays. I believe Tamdu is one of them. But anyway, modern distillery, um, they even did some experiments. Yes, they experimented with um, some peated uh, malt as well. The peat came from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from the Isle of Lewis, where you have now this, this very young and new distillery with the almost unpronounceable name Avengeruk. Um, that's where the peat came from. But it was never bottled as a single malt. Only Signetry, if I'm not mistaken, has an independent bottling of the peated Glenkeith. And they are uh, bottled under the names, let me think, I believe they're called Craig Dove and uh, Glen Isla. That's it. Now, there are not many uh, distillery bottlings of Glenkeith. They only have the, uh, the 10 year old. And they also have an exact same packaging, but instead of 10 year old, it says 1983, as you can see on the little uh, miniatures right there. They also have the 1983, because in 1983, that's when they, when they installed a sixth still, so they could work in pairs, the stills. All right. Now, in 1999, production stopped. So, no more Glenkeith was being produced since 1999. But still, it was an important uh, distillery for the owners, because it acted as a filling store for Strathyla. So the spirit was pumped from the Strathyla distillery to the Glenkeith distillery where it was filled into casks. They also used the, uh, the steam boiler from the uh, Glenkeith distillery and nowadays it is still a research lab where Shiva's brothers who own the distillery nowadays uh, they use um, the, the, the distillery as a, as a research lab where they for example they test different strains of yeast for example. So like I said, not many official bottlings, only the 10 year old and the exact same whiskey uh, with 1983 on the bottle uh, when the uh, six still was added. But apart from that, there are no um, official bottlings. There are quite a few independent bottlings and especially nowadays, uh, older Glen Keith from, from around uh, 1970 uh, is, is being released by uh, independent bottlers. Uh, we've had a beautiful 40 year old by uh, the Whiskey Agency from Germany. Another German bottler, Maltz of Scotland, has got a beautiful Glen Keith 40 year old from 1970. So old Glen Keith is absolutely stunning. This one, however, is very young. This one is only 10 years old. And it's increasingly rare to find this bottle. It's increasingly hard to find it. But that's the one we are going to try. The official bottling, the 10 year old, which is hard to find nowadays, has got a bright golden color. And the nose is very sweet. There's loads of honey in there. Very easy going, very accessible quite flowery as well. I've got some freshly cut grass and some lavender here. It's very mild on the spices. There's almost no spices in here. This is a very gentle, very easygoing single malt on the palate. Mm. 
again, nice mouthfeel, extremely sweet, truckload of honey, little malty, a malty heart. It's got some breakfast tea in there, but now we do get a bit of the spices now. I get some licorice, some, some nutmeg and cinnamon, but it is, it is rather, rather middle of the road. It's very, very easy drinking. It's rather light, very easy going. It's got a medium finish, again on honey and lavender, and some, I'd say some overripe fruit. But all in all, this is a very middle of the road space cider. And that proves again that this is, or at least used to be uh, used as a, a blender's whiskey. It is very popular for, uh, for example, the, in, in the um, 100 Pipers, the Passport whiskey. And of course, since the distillery is owned by uh, Shivers Brothers. It is also used in their blends uh, in the range Shivers Regal. Very easy going, very accessible, very middle of the road, nothing earth shattering at all, but nice, especially in this kind of weather. Very nice. That's the Glen Keith, 10 year old. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope to see you again at one of Mark's Whisker Ramblings real soon. And until then, may the mob be with you. Bye bye.